Thank you, Director Walker, for your introduction. Governor Brown, uh, Deputy Secretary Cummings, uh, and Treasurer Reed, thank you for the opportunity to briefly review the findings of the Oregon Consensus Assessment of interest related to decoupling of the Elliott State Forest from the Common School Fund. Uh, for the record, I'm Peter Harkema, the Director of the Oregon Consensus Program. And prior to beginning my remarks, I'd like to, to thank the agency, tribal, and stakeholder interests that took the time to engage in the interviews for this assessment. I'd also like to thank your uh, assistance for their time and engagement in this process. And um, finally, Director Walker, also you and your staff for your time and engagement, much appreciated. Um, as well as my teammates, uh, Brett Brownscombe and Amy Delahanty, who were members of the Oregon Consensus Assessment Team. As Director Walker mentioned, Oregon Consensus is the state of Oregon's legislatively established program for public policy dispute resolution. We're based at Portland State in the Hatfield School of Government and really exist as a neutral entity to help Oregonians in, in solving complicated and challenging issues, much like the Elliott. Uh, during and following the land board's decision in May of 2017 to move forward with public ownership for the Elliott, there was considerable discussion about a, an advisory process to help determine next steps for the forest. Then DSL Director Paul reached out to Oregon Consensus for our advice and on potential resources and considerations related to such a, a process. Given the tensions related to the board's decision, the differing interests and perspectives on the Elliott, and questions over what it exactly an advisory group would do, we suggested that an assessment prior to launching any sort of group, advisory group, might be helpful. The assessment allowed for uh, a neutral exploration of the issues and interests relevant to a potential decoupling effort, and for parties and perspectives to inform the process and framework for moving forward. Um, this is what's captured in the report in front of you. The assessment and the resulting report is a compilation of 46 interviews with more than 70 people. And while we were not able to interview everyone who has an interest in the Elliott, you know there are many, um, every effort was made to ensure that the interviewees represented the diversity of perspectives on the, on the Elliott. And it's worth noting that, that the report doesn't and, and really wasn't intended to answer the question of the future of the Elliott. Rather, it compiles and distills the many perspectives, it, the challenges and opportunities into a single and we hope readable uh, document that can narrow the focus of issues, options for parties and yourselves as the decision makers to consider as you work to determine the, the forest future. By way of context, let me just very briefly orient you to the overall structure of the report which begins with uh, an explanation of the Oregon Consensus Assessment process. It's, this is followed by a synthesis of information that was gathered from the interviewees. That's in sections two and four. And, and finally, the last section focuses on process recommendations for addressing decoupling of the Elliott State Forest for, from the Common School Fund. Um, there are a number of topics I'd like to take just that, that bear consideration, but I'd like to take just a couple of minutes to highlight uh, a few of those um, that seem both timely and, and relevant for today. Um, the first arises on page 14 in a section called Land Board Assumptions. Uh, you know, this section is based on reviewing of past Land Board member statements and actions, as well as a number of conversations with your assistants. In this section, uh, our team has attempted to uh, describe the board's current areas of common ground. We think the land, that land board verification and any necessary clarification of these assumptions is needed in order to focus the future decision space by clarifying what appears to be the board's current direction as it relates to the Elliot. This will provide a crucial foundation for the uh, future work uh, on decoupling, including any potential advisory group. Uh, the assumptions are described in detail in the report, and I won't go through them in great detail, but they do include the following elements. Common school fund responsibility, complete decoupling, public ownership and access, conservation values, 
working forest features, workforce and local community benefit, and tribal engagement. The second area where near-term direction from the board may be helpful uh, to the future is, is the future public ownership topic. Many facets of this are described in detail in the report. However, for today's purposes, we wish to highlight just simply the fact that a number of parties described a potential interest in taking on an ownership role for the Elliott. <coughs> Although it's, it, we didn't hear that any party was ready to come forward with a full proposal right now. Um, so whether parties are interested, meaning that they don't want to be left out of any future conversations related to the Elliott's future, or whether they are working to put together a full uh, proposal that advances ownership interest in the Elliott remains less than clear. Although it is worth noting that consistent with the framework provided to the board in April 2017, Oregon State University is currently examining ownership and management considerations related to the forest. Uh, given the board's sense of urgency in reaching an outcome on the Elliott, uh, the report suggests it's important in the near term to clarify the range of entities that would actively pursue potential ownership uh, through a decoupling path. On page 28 of the report, we have described one possible path, approach for doing so, doing so through um, input to DSL. I'd also want to note today that the assumptions and the process recommendations sections of the report speak to a number of additional topics that bear consideration and need future clarification as you determine next steps for decoupling. These include board clarification related to the use of the 100 million in bonding and the relationship between a potential decoupling effort and the habitat conservation planning effort for the forest. And to conclude my remarks today, I want to leave you with a, a, a message of optimism, uh, I suppose tinged with a, a bit of realism, which seems only <laughs> fitting for the Elliot. Uh, and, and to do so, I'd like to just paraphrase from the report a, a bit in our conclusion. And, and really, it's to say that the Elliot is a really special place, and it's valued by Oregonians. And it, it's symbolic of many other things conversations and, and for for some it's become the epicenter of broader conversations around public land, tribal sovereignty, habitat, jobs and economic opportunities, and deep cultural and historic ties to the land. The affinity that people feel for this forest makes finding a solution to the present situation a difficult proposition. Um, and finding it a solution to the Elliott will require strong leadership. Uh, leadership that can overcome a lack of trust, boldly clarify areas of uncertainty, and provide clear direction and a vision for the future. The challenge in finding a solution lies in identifying a space that is sufficiently acceptable to the varied interests, but it also is likely that no solution will satisfy everyone. There are those that would prefer that no compromises are made. Uh, yet, among those, and here's the optimism, right? The, among those that we interviewed, there was a persistent theme of practicality and, for many, optimism that now is the time to resolve the issues that have long ch challenged the Elliot. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you.